Hello, everybody, and welcome to our devotional cast. It's good to see or be in front of you. I can't actually see you, but I'm looking forward to that time that that I can see all of you. Uh, we are in the book of Hebrews. I uh, got a couple notes. Get my Bible over here in front of me. I forgot to do that uh, as I was setting everything up here. But uh, I hope you're having a good day. I hope these uh, studies and devotionals have been beneficial to you. I hope you're growing from them, uh, get you in the Word a little bit. And I'll tell you, uh, we're doing, Jay and I switch off every other chapter, and I've got a couple chapters here that, one, I'm going to tell you, be sure and read them ahead of time uh, before we discuss them. Uh, we're in Hebrews chapter 5. If you haven't read it, just pause this for a moment and, and go read it. And then uh, my next one will be uh, in chapter 7. And you'll really need to read it ahead of time as well. And we're not going to be able to cover all the material in either one of them in the time that we have. But uh, it should provoke a little study, uh, maybe cause some questions. And uh, hopefully that you can grow from that. But anyway, in Hebrews chapter 5, uh, let me start off by backing up to Hebrews chapter 4. And I know Jay just shared that with you a couple days ago. Uh, but toward the end of the chapter, in verse 14 of uh, Hebrews chapter 4, it says, Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession." So that bleeds into what's being said in the beginning of chapter 5. And in and, and the same context, we, re, we realize that chapters and verses aren't inspired, just the words. And so it, it, that thought is continued into chapter 5. And so whenever we pick up in chapter 5 and verse 1, it says, For every high priest chosen from among man, or from among men, is appointed to act on behalf of men in relationship to in relation to God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. So there he describing what a high priest does and and how he is appointed by God. But a high priest was still a man. And so he goes on and as as we read on in this passage and uh, let's just continue to do that in verse 2. He says, He can deal gently with ignorant and wayward since he himself is beset with weakness. You know, we can always identify with people that are like us. Uh, if you have something in common with somebody, generally you hit it off rather well. And here he says that the high priest was like the people uh, because they he they can deal with them gently uh because he's weak as well uh as a human and he goes on because of this he is obligated to offer sacrifices for his own sins now we know that jesus was sinless so thus jesus it says that he was tempted as all points at all in all points like we were but he was sinless, but the other high priests were not sinless. And so they not only had to offer sacrifices for all the people, they had to offer sacrifices for themselves. And he said that in verse four, no one takes the honor for himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was talking about how Aaron was called by God. So he gets into this discussion and as we go on in the chapter and, and we see these things uh, unfolding, uh, he says that Jesus is a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, we are going to talk a little bit, not a whole lot, but a little bit about Melchizedek uh, in chapter 7 because he, he's, he's a predominant figure in that chapter. But just to, to get him introduced, we, real, we have to realize that Melchizedek, one of the unique things about him was he was a priest 
but he was also a king. And that made him even greater than Aaron. And for this book being written to Hebrew Christians, they're very familiar with the old law. They're very familiar with the Hebrew way. And thus, uh, they know all about Aaron and Abraham. And those are some of their heroes, so to speak. And so here he says this about Melchizedek. And like I say, we'll, we'll talk about that in a, in a few days. But he goes in verse 7, it says, In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications. Okay, we know that Jesus was a praying man and, and he did these things. He says, with loud cries and tears. Now, why would Jesus offer up prayers and supplication and cry with tears, with loud cries and tears? It says, to him who was able to save him from death. And we know that that would be God. God would be the only one that could save him from death. And he was because, and it says he was heard because of his reverence. So sometimes, if you ask if your prayers are answered, yes, but they're not always answered in the way that you want them to be answered. It says Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. But we know what happened. Jesus still had to die, didn't he? God could have snatched him up. God could have done anything. But for us to have salvation, Jesus had to die. And the Hebrew Christians at this time understood everything about the old law. That's what they were brought up knowing and learning and now things have changed christ has come he's lived he's died he's been resurrected and now they are a part of the body of christ they're they're christians now but they're having to still grasp how it's different today than what it was under the old law when they had high priests and it says that jesus was that high priest and he didn't have to offer sins he didn't have to offer sacrifices for himself because he was sinless and he had no need for that and thus it says in verse 9 being made perfect he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek so he says, you know, he was made perfect. Perfect oftentimes means complete. He became the source of eternal salvation. It's through Jesus that we have salvation. We understand that. And he says salvation to all who obey him. So when we seek and receive that salvation, it's when we're obedient to what he tells us we should do or not do. And then in the latter part of the chapter, he gets into people that need to grow up spiritually. And that was true then. It's been true, I imagine, every generation since then. And it's true yet today. He says, about this we have much to say. And it's hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. I preached about that just recently. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. A very easy illustration to understand. We know a baby needs milk but as a baby grows up and becomes an adult 
They need solid food. And if you just live on milk, you're not going to be the person you should be. Uh, for everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness since he is a child. So we have a lot of people that have grown up bodies. They have jobs. They have families. They have everything that an adult would have. But he says they haven't grown up spiritually. They're still like little babies when it comes to being spiritual. And he says they need solid food, but they're too immature. They're not mature enough. And it says, for those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. When you're on milk, when you're a baby, you don't know good from bad. You just take what's given to you. A baby, I was just visiting with Jay, talking about their new son, James. Now, he's only a couple months old, but they're already being able to distinguish the different cries that he has. One cry is when he's hungry. One cry is when he's tired. One cry is whenever he wants attention. And that baby's already growing and, and, and learning those little things but he's still immature that he can't get any of it by himself. Now, you or I have grown up physically. If we want something to eat, we know how to go to the refrigerator and get something. But whenever it comes to spiritual matters, many, many adults are little babies. Many, many adults have no idea what God wants them to do because they've never feasted on the word of God because they've never allowed the word to penetrate their heart, their brain. They've constantly just taken what was offered, believed that that was the way it is, accepted it and gone on with their life ignorant to what God really wants them to do. So don't be a babe or a big baby, I might say, when it comes to spiritual things. Get in his word. Feast on it. Grow on it. Accept Jesus knowing that he is the ultimate high priest and he was the ultimate sacrifice that we could be in heaven one day with him. So some things to think about. Go back and read them. Jay will be with you in a couple of days for chapter six. And let's conclude with a word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we humbly bow before you just in awe of your power and your might. Help us, Lord, to feast on your word. Help us, Lord, to, to grow spiritually by knowing and learning of your will for our lives. Good Lord, may we not be as babies when it comes to living for you, obeying you, serving you. Help us to grow and to do what your word tells us to. Help us to mature in our Christianity so that we can not only strengthen ourselves, but reach out and help others. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for giving us your son. We're thankful that he was willing to be our sacrifice and be our high priest that lives forever. Thank you, dear Lord. 
And it's in your son's name, Jesus, that we pray. Amen.